Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kerry Allen from Photography Schoolhouse, and we're back with the uh, last part of our series on pro lighting in the home studio. This is part 10, and it's on low key lighting. So, just to recap the entire series, the principle of the series was to be able to show how you could do a variety of photography effects, different lighting effects, while you're in relatively compact spaces. The reason that we're doing this, of course, is most photographers have to operate out of their homes. Commercial studios are nice, but they're also incredibly expensive and the kind of thing that can really um, destroy your business unless you're very careful. So operating out of your home doesn't necessarily mean that you have to shoot outdoors all the time. You can shoot in just about anything. So in here, we're shooting in a living room. In fact, all we're doing is going to shoot this entire session up against a gray wall. So uh, maybe camera, what is that, camera three? Does that give us an overview of the whole, this end of the room? Camera three? Well, then camera two. <laughs> the one that shows the whole end of the room. That one, but it's not on. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to show that we're in relatively compact quarters here, and we're still going to do low key, which makes it a little bit dif more difficult. I'm going to show you how I attempt to overcome those issues. Um, so we have with us tonight our model, Natalie. You may remember Natalie, she's been a model with us now for like five years, four years, five years, a long time anyways, and uh, she's back, so that's great. Um, Low-key lighting, let's define what that is for a minute. Um, we've done high key, and we, high key is defined when the, most of the tones of the image are over 18% neutral gray. And, of course, low-key is the opposite, where most of the tones in the image are less, 18% gray or less. So I had Natalie, who dress in dark wardrobe, black top, black pants, and, of course, her hair is very dark, um, which is perfect for what we want to do tonight. And we're going to show a variety of shots that we can accomplish uh, that doesn't require a black background. It's not that I'm hanging gray paper here or black paper. This is a light gray or kind of medium gray wall and we're still going to make it low key. Obviously the way you do that is you have to deprive the background of light. So one of the things that we can start with is can we, we call that one camera two? <coughs> Well, actually, no, let's leave it on that camera. Whatever camera can see this strip light. Go back to camera one. I think Marianne can repoint it. On the strip light, um, the strip light, its shape itself is going to limit the beam of light, which means we're going to be able to narrow the focus, stop light from spilling in areas of the studio that we don't want it to. But even more so, these egg crate inserts really reduce the spread of light even more. So when, if I were to position this light here, it's off right now, but if I put it here, obviously it's going to miss this background altogether and just light our subject area. So using as much light control as we can, we're going to deprive or give light to the background. So we can make this wall go anywhere from totally jet black all the way up to pure white and any shade in between simply by the way we control the light. Now depending on your studio, you may or may not be able to um, deal with it. It's the color of your walls and I warn you if you have heavily colored walls light in a studio will bounce off that colored wall and come back with the same color. So if I had a deep yellow wall here as an example, I'm going to be spilling yellow light onto the subject. So it's better if you're in a room without heavily colored walls. 
These walls are, like I said before, they're all kind of a medium to light gray, which means any light that hits them is going to bounce around like a reflector, making our problem even more compound for low-key lighting. Nonetheless, we're still going to get it done. So we're only going to use, we're going to start with only two lights. And over here, on your left, my right, we have a strip light exactly like the one we just looked at with a honeycomb grid. And it's set to skim across Natalie's face. And most of its light is bypassing the wall. But this light, this fill light, the small softbox light, I think camera two can probably see it, um, is set further back and it's set as low as it can go. So it is going to throw a little bit of light on the background and we're okay with that. Because uh, we, I don't want jet black yet. We're going to get to that part, but not right now. Now, what do you do if your room is such that you can't control the lighting in the way that you would like to? Well, you could hang a black drop. And black paper kind of works, except there's a sheen on the paper that actually makes it a little bit... Where's your mute? <laughs> okay, a little jig in the middle of our production here. Uh, that's it. I'm firing all the staff. So, your cell phone should be off even though you're at home. Yes, I know. <laughs> no, I'm talking to the audience. Um, so where was I? I was talking about black backdrops. Paper backdrops are okay, but sometimes hard to work with. I have a black backdrop that's actually a velveteen kind of material which means that it doesn't uh, reflect very much light at all. So if you need to use that, so be it. But I still think in 90% of cases you can just get around with, uh, or get away with using just light controls and being very careful about where you place things. So let's take a couple of pictures and see how we're doing. Okay, just a test shot to begin with. Now, you can't really see the histogram, and when you look at this on a television monitor or a computer monitor, it probably looks a little bit contrasty. But as I look at the real picture on the uh, background of the camera, it looks really quite nice. There is detail in the black sweater that she's wearing, detail in her hair, um, and that's really what we're looking for. The fill light is hitting uh, the wall a little bit, but that's okay because that's all kind of darker gray colors. And the fact that it's not even, I kind of like. Everybody might be thinking that you need to have light or a perfectly even background, and that obviously that's not the case. So, not too bad. Let's take a couple more poses with that. And just change the composition a little bit. I can also change the amount of light hitting the wall simply by changing my shooting angle. Uh, you can try, you can move around a little bit. Like that number one pose. Okay. Yep. And kind of turn your shoulders a little bit to the light and be looking back to the camera. Yeah, like that. Natalie joined us tonight after uh, being quite sick earlier in the day with a head cold. But when you're a model, you've got to be a trooper and just hang in there. So just play around with the hair a little bit. Um, maybe what we'll do, too, Marianne, if you could grab the fan. Should have thought of that before, but I'll take some pictures while you set that up. 
It's okay, you can walk in front and uh, it just means I have to get a model release from you. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not without a million dollars, I know. And a pony. And a pony. You all know if you've watched my productions before that I really, really like. Yeah, I like that with the arm up like that. That's good. Nice, nice, nice. Switch arms. Try the other arm now like that. That's good. More swivel of your hips away from me. No, let's try this way. Towards this light. Yep. And then your head back to the other light. Turn, turn, turn. Just your head. Well. Try and turn as if you, no, keep your body towards this light, but your head cranking back that way. So there's a twist like that. Good, good, good. Now, that's more of a classic feminine pose, which is called back to the light and back to the light. Let's, uh, we've got our favorite little fan hooked up. And with Natalie's hair, I'm going to just try a little bit of wind action. Nice. Liking this a lot. Dave, you might want to get your camera ready. That's good. I love that. Yeah, it's okay. All nice. I'm shooting too fast. You can see sometimes the lights hadn't recycled in time. So again, look at the fact that we've got good detail in her hair, good detail in her black top. The shadows are fine. They're not richly black. And obviously, I'll show you what happens if I just turn off this fill light. We're going to get a little bit more contrast to the scene. Which is okay too. I mean, in a way, it's kind of its own drama. Now, just look at me slowly. Don't touch this way too far. Come back a half. Right there. It's kind of a almost a Rembrandt look. So we get a little bit of light on the far cheek, but we've got deep, deep shadows. I mean, artistically, nothing wrong with that, if that's the look you want to go for. I'm going to turn the fill light back on for a second. Oh yeah, okay, we got some real wind action now. I'm going to retouch some of these and post them along with the video so you can see the results after we've kind of worked them up a little bit. So let's talk about, let me try one other thing. I'm going to turn the fill light off again. I'm going to go basically right to the same camera position and notice the difference in the background. Um, background, as you can see, has gone from light or kind of a medium gray on one side to a jet black on the other side. So where is the medium gray coming from? It's coming from the strip light that's on our left hand side that's just catching the corner of the room. So if we had more room, we'd pull Natalie back out again further. That would mean that the entire background is going to be deprived of light and it would be jet black from corner to corner. So you don't have to have a jet black background or a hang a jet black background, you can create it. Now obviously the downside of something like this is the fact that we'd need a hair kicker light to separate her dark hair from the darkness of the background, which we haven't set up yet, but we will a bit later on. Uh, other than that, it's dark, it's contrasty, it's moody, and there's, you know, nothing wrong with that. That could be a really great effect. So, the other thing that you can do, too, and we don't have a family here tonight, but a really popular family portrait would be uh, um, an entire family dressed in black and posed in such a way as so you get a nice assortment of heads. It's a really, really awesome looking low-key family portrait. So let's uh, move on to another pose. I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to have you, I'm going to put the camera down. 
And before we give up, Dave, do you want to shoot? I'm just going to move out of the way. Hello. Do you want uh, the hair moving, Dave? Uh, just in a second. And I'm going to sing and dance. Dave's shooting with a Hasselblad and a uh, so fixed focal length lens, so he's got to get further back. Now, if you've joined the presentation, I should just uh, point out that some of you may not be getting the video signal on that window. If you notice in the uh, chat window, we're telling people to go to the YouTube logo at the bottom of that uh, black box and click that so that it brings up YouTube in a separate window and you should be seeing the live feed from that. And hopefully you heard that. And Dave, if you want, you can just reach over and flick that fill light on if you want to have less contrast. Okay, we're going to change poses. Um, Natalie, I want to, if you look at pose number two on those sheets, it's going to be on the floor, kind of in the corner a little bit. Okay, if you want. That uh, corner on our left. Yeah, down there. So I'm going to need to move the lights, obviously. What I want to do, and maybe come out a little bit. If you can move that. I'm going to try this over here, and let's lower it down. Oops. Yeah, that should be the right one. I'm going to try it there to start with. Actually, turn the light more to Natalie. I wasn't looking where I was aiming. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to try this first. Okay. Now, as far as those wall connectors on the back, don't worry about those. We'd obviously take those out in post-production. And with the uh, content area fill uh, tool in Photoshop, that's like a one-second fix. So don't be distracted with wall connectors or anything else. Slide over a little bit that way. And I'm backing up a little bit. I'll come down lower. And I'll try a couple with the fill light on. Did I turn it on or turn it off? I turned it off. Okay. 
That would be the problem. And I'm going to get as low as I can. Now, we're a little bit brighter on the wall maybe than we should be for real low key. It's kind of borderline. But the fix for this is obviously move the subject further from the background and re-aim the light. So, uh, Marianne, on that side, pivot the light more to Natalie. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Right there. And you can see we've let the dark, the background go totally dark. So one with and one without the fill light. Get in and zoom in a little bit. And that's good. Maybe just pivot towards that light a little bit, spin on the spot. Yep. Good. And you can bring one hand up again like you did before, over the head. Yeah, like that. Oh, flash didn't go. And then, of course, you can try one from a high camera angle. Only thing you have to be careful of here is not blocking your own light. Just spin on the spot that way. Do, 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 do. Now, yeah, same pose. And just you're kind of looking, your shoulders are that way and you're looking over this shoulder. And try looking down low to start. Look, yeah, look down at that. Now just lift your eyes to the camera. Beautiful, beautiful, nice. Beautiful. And then slide closer to that light. There we go. I'm intentionally trying to get the corner of the room in the shot. It's not by accident. I'm working on that on purpose. Nice. Okay, so Natural room set, no backdrops, got a corner of the room, so we shoot the corner of the room, nothing wrong with that. Dave, do you want a couple, because we're going to move on after this. You might be blocking your own fill. back next series now I'm going to make one little change in that I'm going to take our uh, softbox fill 
and change it from a soft box to a 20 degree honeycomb grid. Now, where, which camera is live right now? Where are we? Camera two. You all should know what a honeycomb grid is. There I am. <laughs> okay, so a honeycomb grid, 7-inch reflector is pretty standard with most uh, brands. This honeycomb grid is just going to narrow the, the light beam, uh, give it more concentration. And the way it goes, they typically go from 10 to 40 degrees, 10 being the smallest, narrowest, 40 being like a wider angle. Uh, so I have them all, and this is a 20. We also have a three degree, which is kind of a special order item, very, very narrow beam of light. But story for another day. So that's all I'm going to do with this light is put this grid on the light. And then this light is going to move. I think I'm going to have to unplug. Can somebody unplug me? Right in behind, if you can read today, there's a plug right there. Okay, and just have a seat on the stool again. No, it should be okay. Dave's athletic. Natalie Turner, is that light aimed at you? So I'm putting this light pretty much right beside her. I'm going to separate her hair with that light from the background. I, yeah, I may need you to point, depending on what I see. Now, let, her, let me get the pose in. So for this one, you're going to turn kind of like this, full sideways to the camera, looking right into that light. Yep. And then we're just going to adjust, you know, look straight in. And then maybe actually look up a little bit, like you're... Wow. Now, it's hitting her in the back of the head. I'd like it a little higher at the top of her head. Let's try it again. Oh, kind of misaimed that one. Got a blink, but nonetheless, you see the idea. So no fill light, just one strip light and a kicker light for hair. But if you turn that light off for a second, notice how dark that's going to be. Well, not quite that dark. Okay, you can see, you can't see the back of her hair at all. So what's that light set for, Dave? Probably, uh, is it a one or a two? Okay, yeah, I just wanted it as low as it could go. So um, now all, we, all I want to do, bring your arms back a little bit, and then even look up higher. Still straight at the light, but look up a almost the ceiling. Yeah, I don't think leaning back, so sit up straight. Yep. Get up. Look, look, look. You're looking for the Lord. Even higher. Yep, like that. Yeah. 
and don't know where the hair kicker is not maybe it didn't fire oh there it's firing now so okay kind of a dark contrasty stark portrait obviously you've got to be careful I wouldn't use this pose uh, with somebody who maybe isn't happy with their nose uh, Natalie's just about perfect in every way so not everybody is um, a profile shot like this could be dangerous in some cases so just think about when you're using this now the only thing I'm going to do a little bit differently is instead of doing it as like a head and shoulders shot go back to that pose again and again so you can see the background is basically jet black and that's a light gray wall so it's just because we've deprived it of all the light at once now let's try a similar pose of drop your look your gaze down towards the floor a little bit like that and then pull your chair towards me just a touch touch more okay look at the light now look at the corner of this corner over here just bring your hair back off your face and yeah like that maybe look at this edge just want to see So more of a, here's something that you can look for in portraiture. You see the line of her nose does not break or is breaking the line of the cheek. So let me show you what happens. Turn your head towards me. More, more, more. Right there. So that's when the line of the nose is contained within the cheek line, which generally, rule of thumb, looks better. Now, just a slightly back. Up, 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 stop. I'm not getting flash. So a little bit, almost a Rembrandt uh, style, not really totally Rembrandt, but a little bit of light splashing onto the dark cheek, just to open that up. And uh, other than that, it's a nice high key portrait. Now, these are all obviously, the camera's tethered, so this is all straight out of camera this isn't the way I would send it to the the final image to the customer I would uh, smooth the skin a little bit and that's the danger of using this kind of lighting is that uh, any uh, skin texture at all anything is going to show so you know use this kind of lighting sparingly but still it looks pretty darn good okay variation on that theme while we have this lighting set up I think I can do this just have you spin and look at the other the other direction come back kind of a little three-quarter yeah like that let's start with that we got that as a kicker might be too much kicker though Pull your chair towards me a touch. Still looking over that way. Okay, so I've got, basically I've got the uh, kicker light where I want it. The kicker light in this shot is the strip light that was the main light from before. Dave or Marianne, I'm going to need you to reposition that light. So Natalie, you keep looking at that spot so we can see where that light's hitting. And maybe bring your hair back off that side of your face as well, because that's where your light's going to come from. Yeah, so we want to illuminate. This is basically extreme short lighting. want to illuminate that side of the face with the honeycomb. Let's try that. It's getting pretty close. There we go. And... Uh, Okay, keep looking over there. 
I'm going to have you look more at that black pole. Chin up a little bit. Marianne, can you bring this strip light towards, um, like just sideways a little bit? Okay, stop there. Okay, this isn't really working the way I want, so I'm going to make one change. I'm going to bring that light to the other wall. Marianne, we're going to have to unplug it. The light Dave's holding. Okay, I can't, because of the sofa, I can't get this light in exactly the right position. You can plug it in here because we're not going to see that. Now I'll just bring it up that way. I'm going to change your pose looking towards here. And we're going to aim the honeycomb up higher. I'm going to turn that light off. Let me just take a test. Getting close. Marianne, can you push that late a little bit more, or Dave can? Where you want? Yeah, touch more to Natalie. There we go. That's the fill I want. Now back to that light. Make it, uh, bring it over a little bit. and maybe down a little bit so it's not quite so high. We want it to illuminate the side of her face right there. Okay, let's try that. That could be good. Okay. Now for this one, the pose is basically along these lines where my thumb is. So it's kind of an exaggerated and I think we want some fan action for this. The fans should really come from this direction. From kind of beside me. Yeah. Take a shortcut. <clears throat> from beside me. Oh, well, we have an answer for that. We actually have two of these fans. We just, and we quite often on a shoot, we'll use them both. You're going to be caught under that, yeah. Trying not to move the light. Thanks, Natalie. Over there. So, we want it from a... Uh, now, let's try it from there. So, you're facing more towards the camera. You just get the lighting here. It's okay. Yeah, I'll refine that in a second. You, you bring your hands together, not flat on your chest, just like, like that, like you're praying. You know, maybe a little bit looser, not so much grip. 
and then tilt your head up a little bit the other way yeah like that and to the camera and push that light more to Natalie okay There we go. Rotate your shoulders back towards me, almost facing directly to the camera. So you're, the pose is almost kind of straight on to the camera, like that, hands together. Yeah. Oh, last didn't go. Side a little twist that way, right there, just so the light catches your eye. Head up. See, the hair is blowing up instead of back, so it's going to come from a higher angle. But you're always looking straight ahead. And this one, you got to think, toss your head back a little bit. Yeah, like that. Close your eyes as if you're thinking about something. Don't like that her hair's blowing. Yeah, like that. Okay. Lost that light for some reason. There we go. That's more along the lines of what we're looking for. To who? Oh, okay. All right. So, Dave, if you want to take some shots, this is your this is your chance. So most of this lighting is about learning to see. It's not that I had, well, I had a general idea of the pose that I wanted. I didn't have a lighting diagram in front of me. I had to just look at each step of the way and adjust the lights until I got exactly what I was looking for. Um, and that's, for me at least, is usually the way I work. I don't have always a set lighting plan in mind. I have generalities when I start a shoot. But you look, you see, you see where the shadows are, you decide if it's okay or not, and you pretty much go from there. Are we on uh, live action or still? Okay. No. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up. We've pretty much taken our hour. Uh, if there are any last questions about low key or anything at all, just type them in the chat window. You just get where I can read them. Yep. So I'm guest 656. The camera battery is about to die. That's fine. I have a charged one standing by.
I really don't know why the video is not playing in that main window and boggles my mind why we have to go to the YouTube window. Probably YouTube deciding that uh, you know they want everybody just to go to YouTube to see things. So this was part 10 of our Pro Lighting in the Home Studio series. It's a complement, obviously, to the high key one we did uh, a few weeks ago. So this is um, the end of this series, which means it's ready to start a new series next, next week. Same time, same place. Check your email or Facebook, and you'll see the details of where to go and where to, where to join. But from here on in, we're changing the format slightly. Am I on camera somewhere? No. Nope. Camera two. There we are. We're changing the format a little bit. We're not going to do what we've always done where, you know, we had a broadcast about maternity and a broadcast about wedding and a broadcast about... It's not always going to be about that anymore. Sometimes it's just going to be a broadcast about creativity. Just taking a subject and coming up... Now I'm back. Don't know why. Okay, sorry, we lost the audio for a second, but uh, the, the new series is about creativity. Learning to, a little bit of what we did tonight, just to see what you're doing, come up with some answer as you shoot, as opposed to going in with a static plan. Um, and to try and create works that set yourself apart from the competition in your area. So all of that is an ongoing series that starts one week from tonight. So that's it for today. I don't think there's... Any... No. no. I think we're all good. No questions. So we're going to call it a good night, and we'll see you next week.